హలో వెల్కమ్ టు ఎన్పిటిఎల్ ఎన్ఓసి అని ఇంట్రొడక్టరీ కోర్స్ ఆన్ పాయింట్ సెట్ టెక్నాలజీ మోడ్యూల్ ఫిఫ్టీ ఫోర్ గ్రూప్స్ ఆఫ్ హోమియో ఆఫీసర్స్ రిమెంబర్ దిస్ ఈజ్ ఏ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ అవర్ కాంపాక్ట్ స్టడీ ఆఫ్ కాంపాక్ట్ ఓపెన్ టెక్నాలజీ సో ఫర్ ద రెస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ది స్టాక్ వీల్ ఆల్వేస్ అజ్యూమ్ ద టెక్స్ ఇస్ ఏ లోకలీ కాంపాక్ట్ house dust topological space though we may not mention it again and again and hx denotes the group of all homeomorphisms of x self homeomorphisms that co denotes the compact open topology on hx we discuss the problem whether this hx with the compact open topology is a topological group or not it is shown that this is not so in general in general means just under this hypothesis namely x is locally compact of all it is also shown that under the additional hypothesis that x is locally connected the answer is yes an example to illustrate that local connectivity is not you know is necessary is included if that is not correct thing local connectivity is necessary is included the motivation for this discussion is that a positive answer to this problem has applications in bundle theory we are unable to locate any discussion on this topic in the existing literature main question is the following does the set hx of all homeomorphisms of a topological space x form a topological group under the compact open topology with the usual composition law of functions whenever you take self homeomorphisms or self automorphisms of any kind the group law is always the composition law of course it is natural to demand that x is locally compact of the space because we are dealing with compact open topology it seems that all working mathematicians who have to use this result assume the truth of it i too have been assuming this though i have not used it in any of my research works the point is that the statement is true for a large class of spaces which are interesting to topologists for instance if x is compact we will see a easy proof of the assertion here x is discrete you can do it by hand and see that this is also okay x is a manifold not easy x is locally finite cw complex that is not easy so these are the things some sort of proofs seems to be there in the literature but nobody has written down it anything so whenever people have used it for especially for manifolds apparently they they are sure of that the result is true somewhere so that is the whole <laughs> situation we first notice that the proof of an affirmative answer to the above question in the case when x is compact is quite easy so naturally our first attempt to prove the same for a non compact locally compact host of space is to go to the one point compactification do uh, you know use the theorem there and try to bring back to kind to come back note that every element f belonging to hx has a unique extension f hat which is also a homeomorphism such that the extra point f hat of star is just the star that point at infinity whatever you want to call x star is the one point compactification here also note that the association f going to f hat can be used to identify the group hx with a subgroup of hx star namely those which fix the point at infinity 
Therefore, we are led to ask the following question. Does the compact open topology on HX coincide with the subspace topology from HX star? Start with HX star, give the compact open topology. You can take the subspace topology because this is a subset now. You can treat this as a subset, actually, actually a subgroup. But the question is whether that subspace topology is, com uh, is compact open topology in its own right in, in, in on X on HX. So it turns out that this question seems to be harder than the original question. Indeed, one can more or less see that the two questions are equivalent. At least this is harder in the sense, this is stronger in the sense. You can, if this is true, then you can get an easy proof of question number, this question, main question. So the answer to our main question itself is not always in the affirmative. The example that we have is obtained by removing origin from the standard deleted middle one third canter flat in the unit closed interval. On the positive side, we have the following result. Let X be a locally compact, locally connected Hausdorff space and HX denote the set of all homeomorphisms of X, self homeomorphisms. Okay. Take the compact open topology on HX. Then this HXCO is a topological group. On the way to prove this theorem, we shall see that the result holds for all compact Hausdorff spaces without the extra assumption of local connectivity. So we don't have to prove that one separately. Okay. So let us start proving, but there will be many interruptions in between. So let us hope we can start proving. Recall that. The compact open topology is generated by sub basic open sets of the form. This, uh, you know, angle bracket KU such that all F belonging to HX such that FK is contained inside you. Remember, this notation we used for all continuous functions when we were dealing with space of all continuous functions. Here, I have restricted myself to only homeomorphisms of x to x. Therefore, the same notation I will use, the notation is changing, so that is why I have carefully uh, rewritten it here. Now, this is actually the old notation KU intersection with hx. That means only the homeomorphisms are taken, not just all continuous functions. So, that is what you have to pay attention to this one. In any case, inside HX is a subspace of all continuous functions from X to X, right? So, this is subspace topology there. Therefore, if you take these basic, the sub basic open sets in the bigger topology and intersect them with the subspace uh, in the subset, they will be sub basic open subsets for the sub base topology. So, there is uh, no problem in that one. So, this is the subspace topology from the compact open topology on all continuous functions. For a locally compact Hausdorff space, by B of our earlier theorem, namely exponential correspondence theorem, the continuity of the composition map Hx cross Hx to Hx or F comma G to F composite G is a consequence of the continuity of the the corresponding uh, function evaluate under evaluation map and so on, right? You have to evaluate it at x, hx cross sx cross x and evaluate it fg operative moment x fg of gx. This is a function, this evaluation function is a map into x. So, if this is continuous, then that is continuous. This could be any domain, okay, in some domain into the space of. Uh, continuous functions in a function space 
is continuous if and only if compose it with the evaluation map here is continuous that is all we have seen in this is the theorem we have we have used several times now we are going to use that also okay so how to verify that this f comma g comma x going to f composite g of x is continuous on this product space h x cross h x cross x i have take to h x all right so to verify this namely this this one fix f g and x such that this composition and operated on x is inside an open subset u okay then i have to produce a neighborhood of f cross a neighborhood of g cross a neighborhood of x such that under this function the entire neighborhood goes inside u so that is the continuity at this point so start choosing an open subset v such that gx is inside v and v bar is compact and f of v bar is contained inside u so this i am doing by the continuity of f f of gx goes inside u so some open subset goes inside u under f that open subset v can be chosen to be compact also and so closure is compact also because the local compactness similarly once you have chosen this v now f of x goes into v right therefore we will get an open subset w such that x is inside w w bar compact g of w bar inside v now it is straight forward verification to see that v bar cross u so this v bar is compact this is open right so all function all oh, homeomorphisms taking v bar into u that's a neighborhood neighborhood of what neighborhood of f because f is one of them so this is an open subset this is an open subset this open subset contains g and this is the open subset started with uh, you know chosen so the w so the x is inside w right so this is an open subset of f comma g comma x this is an open neighborhood okay so if you take you know you take arbitrary you know uh, say f prime g prime w prime with this property the composition will land up inside w is very straight forward to right? establish okay so in particular it follows that once we have proved that the composition is is uh, continuous you can restrict it to fix f look at g going to f composite g so that is a left multiplication by f fix g so fix f okay sorry fix g now f going to g uh, f composite g that is a right multiplication by g so both of them will be continuous that's all so this is a standard thing so left which is left multiplication by f rf is a right multiplication by f so both of them are continuous okay from hx to hx the main thing here is to prove that the inverse is also continuous once you prove that it follows that the group laws are continuous therefore the hx is a topological group so this is what we have to prove here is an elementary result that we want to use since this is done seem to be very common let me just uh, take a few minutes to state it clearly and then prove it also in general result let g be a topological space with a group operation g cross g to g continuous only assumption is the the multiplication is continuous suppose for the this eta from g to g given by g eta g is g inverse that is the inversion map okay suppose this continuous at just at a okay just at any one point so better take at a then eta is continuous on the whole of g this kind of result you must be have, we must have used in any topological group itself like if you have a continuous homomorphism it uh, any homomorphism 
which is continuous at identity e comma e will be automatically identity on the whole space on the whole group and so on differentiable functions if they are group homomorphisms differentiability at a single point then it will imply differentiability everywhere that kind of thing but in all of them you already have a topological group here the kind of result that we are uh, a technique that we are using is the same but only continuous function is only multiplication is continuous the eta g is not yet continuous that you can't assume we are going to prove that this inversion eta is continuous now okay so that is why this is not all that uh, common so let me tell you the proof we first note that for each g inside g the left multiplication right multiplication are continuous because of because uh, the multiplication itself is continuous since lf inverse okay is equal to l of f inverse and rf inverse is r of f inverse it follows that lf and and rf each of them is a homeomorphism okay first of all they are continuous for well, same reason l of f inverse is will also continuous because f inverse is another element there okay so now let f belong to g be any element we want to check the continuity of eta at that point okay so first you check the following thing the inversion composite lf is nothing but rf inverse of inversion as a map from g to g as a function from g to g so this is the <laughs> commutativity law eta composite lf when comes it on this side it will be rf inverse of lf okay this is very straight for verification this is true in all groups okay since rf inverse is also continuous on the whole of g it follows that rf composite eta is continuous at e okay this is homeomorphism this is just a continuity of this one implies eta is continuous at e so when you take the composite is another continuous function the composite will be also continuous at e okay so this side now eta composite lf we know is continuous at e but now lf is a homeomorphism therefore it will follow that eta is continuous at lf of e okay so all that you need is to use that lf is uh, open mapping okay so this will be easy indeed you can if you are familiar with uh, taking uh, sequence you know sequential continuity and so on you can use that also only thing is the space that you have taken you will have to assume first countable the alternative is there you have learned it in this course namely you don't have to assume first countability what you do you take nets show that uh, use the convergence of nets okay so that i will leave to you as an exercise this also just uh, entertaining exercise on the other hand using nets to prove this one is like using uh, an atom bomb to kill a sparrow so let us use this result now namely continuity at one point namely at identity is enough to prove the continuity of the whole thing okay therefore this come back to this special case now eta inversion in hx to hx okay i have to prove that it's continuous at the identity element of this this group hx okay also note that the inversion is a after all by the very definition it is a inversion inversion is usually inversion inversion of inversion is identity eta inverse you know this involution okay eta inverse is eta so they are same so showing that it is continuous is same thing as showing that it is open okay we need to show that sets of a form eta of k u okay are neighborhoods of identity of x where k is inside u 
because neighborhood of identity means what? f of k must go inside. Uh, if identity belongs, f of k is k itself. It must be inside. So k must be inside you. That's how we have to. So k is compact and u is open. That is the standard thing for all subbasic open set. So we have to show that you know eta of k u. It's the same thing as eta inverse of k u. We have to show that it's a neighborhood of identity because these are neighborhoods of identity you start with, provided k is contained inside you, k compact and u open. Okay. So just do this elementary <laughs> algebra here. F is a point of, I mean, function in eta of k u means f inverse is inside k u, <laughs> right? So that means f inverse of k is going inside u. And that is the same thing as saying k goes inside f u because f f inverse is after f is a homeomorphism. If k is goes f u because now k is f is a one one mapping, okay, it's a bijection. The complement of k will contain f of the complement, but this is same thing as f of the u complement. So f of u complement is going inside k complement. It's same thing as in this notation, f belonging to this Langle u c comma k c. So starting with this an open subset, you have to show that this is an open subset. In the definition of compact open topology, such sets are not there. You see. To to allow this as a subbasic open set, I need this one to be compact and this one to be open. Luckily, since k is compact, it's, it's k is closed, so inverse image the complement is open. But why u c must be compact? U is just an open subset. Okay, so that is the one of the main reasons <laughs> why this is why this is a non-trivial problem. So we have to show that. This is actually open. We don't need to show that. We have to just show that this is a neighborhood of identity. That's enough. Okay, that will be equal to showing that this open actually eta itself will be a continuous function after that. Therefore, we need to prove that sets of the form Langle U C comma K C, where U is any open set and K is compact, K contains inside U. These are neighborhoods of identity. Of course, we need to consider only the case when k is non-empty. Okay, <laughs> if k is a whole space, k c will be empty, right? So, if if k is empty, k c will be the whole space. So, this will be automatically a, a whole. You know, there is no condition on that one. So, that is not a important thing. And u c is non-compact. If u c is compact, then this again open subset. A basic open subset, a sub basic open subset. There is no problem. So, in particular, if U C is compact, means what? U as arbitrary open subset. Therefore, U C is an arbitrary closed subset. When it is compact, the space itself is compact. Once the space is compact, there is no more work to do because this will be a compact subset. That is an open subset. These are sub basic open sets. Set. So, you are home. So that is what I say that we have already now got a proof of the the assertion that you know in the case of X is compact. Okay, this is on the way, but we want to go ahead without uh, this one. So so far we have not used local connectivity at all. Okay, just compact Hausdorff space is good enough. Okay, now we want to use local connectivity. Okay, so here is one more elementary lemma. Okay, so we should state and uh, prove this separately instead of using it in the in the run of the proof. Let X be a locally compact, locally connected Hausdorff space. Let K contained inside U subsets of K such that K is compact and U is open. Then there exists an open subset W of X such that this W is a union of finitely many connected open sets, each of which is actually compact also, 
in any case what i want is w bar is compact and k is contained inside w contained inside w bar contained inside u okay the statement is k is compact u is open so in between you can always get this one so the w contains a w bar by regularity but what i want is this w itself is the union of finitely many connected subsets and each of them such that their closure is compact so that w bar will be also compact so that is the extra thing and that extra thing comes from local connectivity okay the rest of the statement is just regularity here let us go to the proof this is not a difficult thing for each point inside k because that x belongs to u and u is open and because the space is locally compact and connected locally connected i can choose x belong to vx contained inside vx bar contained inside u such that this vx is connected vx bar is compact the first you choose such that vx bar is compact inside that you can choose a local a lo local connectivity you can choose another uh, open set which connected its closure will be contained inside the closure of the original one which is compact so it will be compact that is the way you can prove this one okay now so that is what i said this is possible because x is locally compact first and then locally connected also since k is compact you can get a finite cover k x1 x2 xn all of them inside k such that k is contained inside v x i is i ring to i ring 1 to k i am denoting that as w so that was the assertion there is such a w so this w is the union of these connected subsets each of v x bar is compact therefore w bar is a union of finitely many closed sets of v bar so that is also compact so all of them is contained inside u over so we will use this one and now let us continue with the proof of theorem so let v x i and w etc be as in the previous lemma just now which we have proved for a notational sake i will put l1 equal to w bar i am starting some some kind of uh, induction not very uh, big induction only a number of steps here using the regularity of x remember this w bar is compact and contained inside u so i choose this l1 is w bar l1 is contained inside u so in between i will choose another l2 which is also compact which is a neighborhood of this one so l2 interior is contained inside l2 that contains l1 so similarly in between l2 and l u again l another one we will call it l3 interior contained inside l3 okay so these are all compact subsets now okay l2 and l3 their interiors contain the previous one okay so l1 l2 l3 contained inside u now you take v equal to interior of l3 minus l1 by the way this kind of things we have done several times in proving uh, uh, para compactness and so on okay whenever you have hausdorffness and uh, locally compactness and so on so you are using normality is here strongly regular because things are compact and so on local compactness is extra thing that's all okay so take this v interior of l3 minus this closed set l1 so this is open subset and put t equal to just the boundary of this l2 l2 is a compact set throw away the interior of l2 so that is the boundary of l2 so i will just denote it by t okay so here is a picture what we have done so far started with this uh, rectangle here k contained inside this large open set here so in between the first thing was to take a w such that w is union of finitely many connected open subsets such that each closure is compact so those are the vxis 
okay so this w covers the whole of k and it is contained inside u that's all after that i have chosen the notation w bar to be l so that's a compact set then i choose l2 then i choose l3 okay so that's all picture what is this v this v is this l3 minus l1 interior the other way around l3 interior minus l1 so there is an open subset so did i make we open the subset here l3 interior minus l1 right and then t is just the boundary of l2 okay so i have drawn nice pictures nice pictures will not be all that nice okay they i have drawn a circle here and so on this t cannot be, need not be connected and all that the only thing is this w is a finite union of connected sets okay there is no other way k is not connected u may not be connected nothing is there is no connectivity assumption anywhere else now you take g equal to xi vxi angle so this is an open set intersect it i range 1 to k that is an open set basic open set intersect it with further with t comma v t is compact v is open so this is an open set xi is are in vxi t is inside v therefore identity map belongs to this intersection okay therefore g this g is a neighborhood of identity in hx now look at the complement of c complement of u this portion okay this portion is contained in the complement of l2 also because l2 is inside u right so complement of u is inside the complement of l2 and complement of w contains complement of k because k contains w k is contained in w so i am just reversing de morgan law that's all it follows that if you take l2 c w c the angle here is contained inside u c k c w c is inside k c so everything coming here will be inside k c also on the other hand this is a smaller set l2 c is a larger set if a larger set is going inside here the smaller set you see will be also going inside that under whatever function you take so this langle all functions all uh, homeomorphisms from x to x which take l2 c into w c is automatically contained inside this one okay this is set theoretic uh, uh, result uh, property of this langle function that's all therefore it follows it suffices to prove we want to prove what we want to prove we have to forget that one that this g we have selected right where was this here this g right this is an open subset we want to show that this is neighborhood of identity contained in this open subset namely u c k c okay so instead of that we can just show that this is contained inside this set here that's a stronger statement okay so let us prove that g is contained inside l2 c w c okay now consider this thing t is a closed subset right so x minus t if you think of this one what is t t was the boundary of l2 right whatever is remaining is the interior of l2 minus the complement of l2 complement of l2 is open interior of l2 is open they are disjoint the union is precisely x minus the boundary of l2 this is t so this is a standard way of getting a separation okay this nothing nothing very special about l2 and so on you can you could have taken any compact subset okay 
and take the interior of that and the boundary of that. The boundary of that will separate the interior with the of complement. That is all. For now, take any function, any homeomorphism in G, any homeomorphism you do for this, this particular thing, but we are interested in what is happening for elements of G. Okay. So, since f is a homeomorphism, f of this will be another separation. What is f of x? It is x. What is f of t? It is f t. So, x minus f t will be equal to f of L2 interior and disjoint union with f of L2 complement. Okay. A separation goes to a separation under a homeomorphism. Okay. Now, look at all the xi's which are inside v xi's okay, and v xi's are contained inside L2 interior right? because they are in inside L1 itself. So, we have f of x i, if you take f of that, it will be inside f of L2 interior. Also, f t is contained inside v, okay. in this picture, if you remember, f t remains here, t is here, f t will remain here, because f is inside g, right. f is inside g, t of, f of t is inside v, that is the hypothesis used here. So, f t inside g, f t inside v and hence does not intersect any v x size, because v x size are inside L 2 interior, inside L 1 interior, sorry L 1 interior. So, I have subtracted the entire L 1 from L 2, L 3 interior, so that is v. So, they do not intersect v x size at all, okay. and hence all the v x size must be inside x minus f t, okay, because f t does not intersect this one. So, v x i are x minus f t, but v x i are connected. So, this is a separation. Therefore, v x i must be in one of them. Okay. So, v x i connected. On the other hand, v x i intersection f 2, f of L 2 interior is non-empty because f of x i is there. Right, x i v x i f is here. You see again, x is inside this one. So x i f of x i is inside v x i. X i is also in v x i, but x i does not move out of v x i under f. So this f of x i is are in the intersection. So v x i intersects this one. Therefore, it must be completely contained inside f of L two, L two interior. So, it cannot intersect this part, okay, being connected. Okay. This is true for all i, I have never used anything about x i here, uh, either, other than uh, anything about i here special. So, the entire w which is the union of v x i is contained inside f of L 2 interior. Okay. But Look at this one. If something is contained inside L2 interior, its intersection with f of L2 C is, is empty, right? Therefore, what we get is W C, the complement of W, which contains complement of this. The complement of this, this first part, will contain the this whole thing here, and more perhaps. In fact, to contain complement is being taken in X, so it will contain F T also. Doesn't matter. So it contains f of L to C. So, what we have proved? F of L to C is inside W C. Okay. What does that mean? F is inside the Langle L to C, Langle W, Langle W C. That is what we wanted to prove. L to C, W C. Started with an F element here, it is here. So, that is the proof. Okay. So, proof is over. Indeed, the next thing namely producing a counter example that is if at all you think this is difficult that will be little more difficult. <laughs> okay. So, let us come to that.
So, before that, I will tell you the history. This history is very recent after all, it is just about 3 years old. So, whatever I remember, I have put it here already. Attempt to find a justification for locally connectedness assumption in the above theorem initially led us naturally to the topologist sign car. Recall that this topology sign car is a subspace of R2, is a compact subset of R2 actually, which the union of the graph of sin pi by x on the interval open interval 0 to closed interval 1, open to closed interval. Okay, you take sin pi by x, you take the graph together with the closed interval 0 cross minus 1 plus 1 on the x on the y axis. Okay, I am just uh, I can't go into the full study of sin pi by x now, but I am just recalling you this was this one. We we this is this is a compact set. If you take this one with the compact open topology, uh, yeah, the homeomorphisms of this space, that will be automatically topological group because this is compact set. So, what we want to do is you know destroy the compact compactness by removing a point. So, do that namely take this very special point 0 comma 1 ok 0 comma 1 or 0 comma minus 1 these are two special points there. So, remove one of them. So, remove this one from this opt and obtain the topological space x which is now non compact it is locally compact ok this is subspace of uh, two after all it is Hausdorff also and it is connected but not locally even locally connected locally it is not locally path connected it is not locally connected either we can then think of the original space as the one point compactification of x ok. So, I was trying to prove or disprove actually I was trying to prove that in this case there is an assertion namely uh, affirmative answer namely H x is a topological group, but it turns out that understanding the structure of this, uh, the group structure of H x is very important and we do not know it very well yet. So, I had to abandon this example, but this leads to a sub question here namely this attempt is what that is important here going to one point compactification right. Forget about this particular example try to do it in general ok. So, that is why we have that uh, uh, the sub question anyway does not matter. Now. So, the point is that I wanted to say is that this attempt was uh, not successful yet successfully yet I have not given it up yet of course ok. So, the next example is you can guess what is it the Cantor set. So, Cantor set that uh, did help ok. So, let us study the Cantor set now. So, what I am going to do Cantor set is also compact remember that. So, I am going to destroy the compactness by removing a convenient point you can perhaps do it with any point, but most convenient is the point remove the point 0. Okay. So, recall that Cantor set was obtained this is one third uh, middle one deleted middle one third Cantor set namely for each e integer i 1 2 3 whatever i divided by 3 n to i, divided, I plus 1 divided by 3 n ok. You keep uh, deleting this open interval first you uh, delete 1 by 3 and uh, 2 by 3 1 by 3 to 2 by 3 and then you 1 by 9 to 2 by 9, 4 by 9 to 5 by 9 and so on you keep deleting them ok. That is the that is a construction of the Cantor set ok. So, if you take some some open interval of this length 
1 by 3 power n and uh, to next one 1 plus 1 k plus 1 3 power n i i i by 3 power i plus 1 3 power n of this of this length 1 by 3 power n here this may be empty because this is already in the delete part if it is not empty inside that you will get a carbon copy of the Cantor set again a subspace of a which is of this nature provided it is non empty depending upon value will be called a Cantor subset it is again a carbon copy of the Cantor set which are instead of starting with 0 1 I could have started this interval and then did the same procedure for that interval that is all. So, we shall use the following facts about a Cantor subset. So, Cantor subset I am denoting by A. So, each A, each Cantor subset is homeomorphic to the entire Cantor set C through an affine linear map. End points you take and uh, take an affine linear map which will send the end points to end points. That is all. Automatically, it will give you a uh, homeomorphism of the Cantor sets. Each A is closed on in C, open as well as closed. Okay. If J is an open interval, non empty open interval, huh, and A intersection J is non empty, then A intersection J inside that, that A intersection J contains a Cantor subset. So, that may be A prime or A 1 or B 1 whatever. Each open interval, okay, that is the property of Cantor set, it is repeated, it is copied inside every Cantor subset also, that is what I wanted to say, that is all. Finally, this may need a little more proof, similar to our lemma about local connectivity and so on, but see here this is a different kind of game, but uh, proof is not difficult. Take any Cantor subset contained in union, finite union Li okay, of some open finite covering by Cantor subsets. Okay. It is not an open covering, it is a clopen covering and Cantor subsets are clopen, you know that, it is not just open covering. Okay. These are finite, ma finitely many compact subsets of Li, that is enough. A is a Cantor subset. These are the best comp any compact subsets. Okay, there may be some points also here, and so on. A, a, some intervals also. I can take I can take uh, compact subsets of R to begin with. So A is contained in the union, and each L I is compact is all that are. Then there exists a clopen subset B of A, which is homeomorphic to C. I that all that I say is B is another Cantor subset that is all that is a Cantor subset of B, B which is Cantor subset of A such that the property is important. B intersection L i is non empty implies B is completely contained inside L i. See there are finitely many of them look at L 1. B intersection L1 non empty, it must be inside that completely. If it is empty, it is fine. So, some of them may not intersect. The moment they intersect, they will completely contain B. So, that is the meaning of this one. Okay, for this is true for all the R. So, some of them contain completely, some of them may not contain. That is all. None of them may contain. <laughs> that is not possible because union is inside LR. <laughs> the whole thing is LR, right? If all of them are disjoint, that is not possible. Okay. So, this is the assertion here. So, this will be used in a very uh, peculiar way, you will see that. Namely, so now I take x to be the Cantor set minus 0. We claim that the inversion map is not continuous. Okay. So, it cannot be a topological group under the compact open topology. As seen before, it is enough to produce a compact subset K and an open subset U such that this eta K U, which is U C K C, this we have seen already, is not a neighborhood of identity. Over. If it were a neighborhood of identity, if you have to all the time, then you know that eta would be continuous. So, one single example of this nature will show you that 
it is not continuous. So all that I have to choose is start with a compact subset K and an open subset containing that. Look at U complement and K complement show that this Langer u complement k complement that is of course it is it is a, a, a you know it contains identity because k is contained inside u so u complement is contained inside k the identity is there but this is not a neighborhood of identity no basic op, sub basic open sub intersection of sub basic open sets no basic open set containing identity will be contained inside this one so this is the claim Okay. So, what is the choice? I have to choose some k and something, right? One single choice such that this happens is over. So, what is the choice? Our choice is k to be this two third to one intersection C. So, this is a another Cantor subset. Okay. First zero to one third contains. Uh, 0 which I have thrown away this is 2 third to 1 that part I am taking so that is my k which is a clopen set so I have taken that itself as u it is compact it is open ok so I can take k equal to u so in this one I am shown that this k c u c k c is not open that is what I have to show not neighborhood of identity so for brevity we will just put c naught equal to k complement which is x minus k <laughs> remember where i am taking the complement here now in the space x okay we now show that this c naught c naught the c naught is k k is also u okay so i what i have got is c c naught c naught is not a neighborhood of identity Okay, the statement is obvious. So, so far the only notations and all this I have done. So, now I have to prove this one. Okay, now the proof starts. Let k1, k2, kr be any finite collection of compact subsets of x. Let ui be open subsets containing ki's. One more k0 you take, namely k0 equal to u0 equal to c intersection 2 third 1. Okay, you include this set also. We claim that the intersection i ranging from 1 to r, k i u i, this is obviously, you know, candidate. If, if I, this contains identity and this is an open subset, all open, any open subset which contains will contain an open subset of this nature because the base, these are basic open subsets and this is the most general. I, whenever you have chosen like this, this subset is not contained in C naught, C naught is what I have to show. Even if one such thing is contained in, then uh, I am finished. I, I cannot, my claim is wrong. So, for every k i is chosen like this, finitely many compact sets and open subsets like this. If I want to show, do not worry about k naught, why you should have taken to k naught, you know. I want to show that ki ui itself is not contained inside. Even after taking the intersection, it is not contained in. Even the smaller set is not contained in, larger set will not be contained in. So, that is why I, have, I can take this extra thing also. So, this is a special one I have taken, but these are general things. Okay, So, that will show you that c naught c naught is not a neighborhood of identity. So, how to construct? You have to construct a special function here now, which is a homeomorphism of this x c minus 0, which belongs to this one, but not here. That is all. The idea is to construct a homeomorphism from c to c itself, shuffling suitable counter sets, such that 0 goes to 0. So that if you throw away 0, it is still a homeomorphism of x, that is all. And this f is on the LHS here, but not on the RHS. Okay. Now the construction starts. Look at these finitely many k1, k2, kr, which are compact subsets of x. Okay. 
0 is not a point of x, it is inside the canter set C, right. So, this distance is positive, this is the usual metric, uh, you know, usual distance in R, nothing more than that, okay. This distance is positive. Choose n such that 1 by 3 power n is less than d. Okay. So, that 0 to 1 by 3 power n that interval does not intersect any of these k i's. That is all. Okay. A small interval around 0 is taken. Of course, 0 will be thrown out afterwards that interval is not intersected by none of these k i's that is the important step here. Note that this k naught whatever we have taken k naught is this 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 is one of the canter sets right it is a canter subset. So, k naught is a canter set by the above remark remark for I told you k naught I take now a equal to k naught and union i range 1 to our k i. So, this not uh, a is there k naught union all these things. Okay. So, then a is contained inside that. Okay. A I apply a equal to k naught. Okay. I take a equal to k naught and k naught is i range 1 to our k i. I k, k naught is there k 1 k 2 k r may not cover k naught. So, I am taking k naught also, but what are they? They are compact subsets. So, I can apply it to the a, a is taken as k naught, but I apply this remark for there exists a clopen subset B, okay, which is a copy of canter set such that this B is contained inside k i, i range 1, 2, 3 up to s and the rest of them it does not intersect. This s may be 0 whatever s it will not be 0 because s will have to be contained in the k naught. Okay. So, that is the one of the for example, suppose k i's were all disjoint from k naught then I can take k equal to this uh, this b equal to k naught itself over. Okay. So, b is inside k i. So, I have put i equal to 0 here very precisely, but 1, 2, 3 up to s they are shuffled. The k naught is a special one. All k 1, k 2, k r are arbitrary. You can label them whichever way you like. You do not know what. I am taking the first to s of or the s of them okay, and labeling them as 1, 2, 3 up to s, s of them. What is the property of that? they all contain b that is all. This s may be uh, just 0 also I do not know this only 0 part may be there ok it does not matter. The rest of them do not intersect k i at all. So, choose such a thing after that is why after reindexing the set k 1 k 2 k r. Now, let us do some some more uh, in a bifurcation the whole idea is the subsets of uh, these canter subsets can be written you know disjoint union of so many copies of themselves and so on. So, that is the whole idea. This fractality of the canter set is used very nicely. Take C 1 equal to 0 to 1 third raise to n intersection C. Okay. So, this part does not intersect or none of the k i s that is what we have chosen this one third right this one, one third raised to n that has been chosen in that way. So, look at that one and call it as c 1. You write c 1 itself as disjoint union of two canter subsets ok. You do not you do not have to worry just write it as disjoint union of two canter subsets because this is canter set how it is how is the next thing how it is constructed from this interval you remove the middle one third. So, you get two of them. So, take those intersections. So, C 1 1 and C 1 2. You can always do that. Okay. Whichever way you like does not matter. Now, you write k i equal to k i prime union with b because these k i is contain b. Right. What is b? b is a canter set. Therefore, it is a clopen. 
okay so i can again write ki as a disjoint union of ki primes which will be also clopen okay because bb is clopen and i am taking the complement here ki primes but what happens to other things don't have to worry because ki so don't intersect that part okay so finally you have b itself is subset of k not right it subset of k not k1 kr so that b itself you write as b1 union b2 so all these b1 b2 b and c1 c11 c12 they are all cantor subsets the disjoint union of non empty clopen sets okay now we assume that zero is in the closure of c11 remember zero must be i have taken the whole thing right so zero is inside c11 part you can take so i have actually i should take open interval so c1 in it is in one of them so it is in a, in, in the part of c1 that's all i want to say okay zero is in the c11 part okay note that c11 c12 b1 b2 are all cantor sets and all are clopen sets that's i am repeating here that's all now look at the union of all these 1 2 3 4 that itself is a clopen set inside c so the entire c can be written as c11 c12 b1 b2 disjoint union disjoint union with another l which is also a clopen set all right now the major work is over now i can define my the homeomorphism by merely shuffling this by merely shuffling these things so one thing you have to notice is this l is a complement of all this will contain all the complement of b inside ki a ki primes and all those things which does b b i b does not intersect namely ki ring i ring from 1 to s s plus 1 to r so l will contain all of them okay l will be many more other other things also all rest of the c is there so now define f from c to c as follows first c11 c1 both c11 is a subset of c1 right but both of them are cantor subsets so take a linear homeomorphism which is order preserving and both of them contain zero so make zero go to zero you could have taken the uh, the other way around so order preserving automatically implies that f0 is there okay if i say f0 is zero the rest of them has to be order preserving because this is homeomorphism okay so let f from c12 to b2 be the order preserving homeomorphism linear homeomorphism again both of them are cantor sets there is a homeomorphism all the time assuming so they are all disjoint so i am totally independent in defining these homeomorphisms so f on this one f on this one and so on okay then f from l to l be the identity map last b to b1 see b1 is a subset now so c1 was subset and i went to on to larger set here now i have to cover this part so i will take b to b1 with the order preserving linear homeomorphism okay so since i have covered the entire of c okay because they are all disjoint things and they are going to disjoint things the image and the domain and image are covered completely so f is a homeomorphism it's a continuous bijection and it's a homeomorphism f0 is 0 therefore if you throw away 0 f restricts a homeomorphism from x to x okay now look at 3 this is identity on the on this l and 4 which says b is going to be 1 so these two are important it follows that this f takes ki to ki okay Re these kis are fine because where are they they are inside l so that that is identity what about these kis these k primes are again inside l only the b part you have to see right the b part is going inside b1 
So this Ki is going inside Ki. I am not claied that F is a homeomorphism here. No, F of Ki goes into Ki for each I. Okay, and these are contained inside because Ki is are contained inside U I. So each Ki Ki is contained inside Ki U I. So this intersection is contained inside. So, so F is here. So that was the first thing we have. Now finally, I have to see that F is not in C not C not. Since F and C one two, which is inside B two, to all the way inside two third one. Okay, remember. So this B was a subset of uh, two third one here. So C one two is somewhere away from that one, right? So it follows that F is not in C not C not. Okay, two thirds. What is C not? Remember, C not was the complement of. Let me just show you what was C not. To begin with, this this is C not. C not is is a comp is a short short notation for complement of K. Okay, and my K itself is two third uh, one intersection C. Right. So it has gone out of the uh, complement. So it is not going inside C not at all. So therefore, this F is does not take C not inside C not. So the proof is over. Namely, the Cantor set, the group of homeomorphisms, is not a topological group. So there are a couple of home, uh, questions that uh, automatically rise in this. Uh, Uh, context, namely, find a criterion for H X under co co under complex open topology to be a topological group, where you don't try to put anything other than X equal to locally compact order of space. The criterion means what? Suppose this is locally compact, then X must be this. If X is something something. Then this is a that is one way that I have given you, namely locally connected, locally compact Hausdorff space, right? Equivalently, you can take one point compactification, try to solve the sub subspace problem. Is the subspace on H X coming from H X star? Whether that is, you know, uh, the induced. That is the the subspace topology, whether that is uh, uh, compact open topology. Okay. Or you can try to solve this problem in the case of sine sine one by x and so on. Interesting other uh, interesting uh, uh, cases like that. So there are quite a few problems like this one. Well, that is it. So. So I told you that these these things were done a, a, a few very. Uh, you know, recently, about three years back, so during a, a conference, uh, during a workshop in characteristic classes, uh, in which Shamik Paul attended it, and we were sharing a room for some time, and that time I was discussing with him. Then I am thankful for Alan's, you know, this Alan uh, Hatcher. Uh, I asked him whether he knows. He says he doesn't know. But they maybe look at here and so on. Then I ask Dennis Sullivan and so on. The most important of all, my initial attempts were discussed with Parameshwar. So he said, "Look here, you have to be careful and so on." Parameshwar was there. He painfully went through the initial versions with so many typos and so many uh, misgivings there. But he he saw through the whole thing and made it. Uh, You know where I should be careful and so on. Gave up some warnings, so I should thank all of them. Of course, I thank you for listening to this one also. It's a good opportunity of presenting this one. Okay, so thank you. We will meet next time.